Would you agree that today the real winners are computer science types? In terms of market trading. So this goes to this entire idea of algo high frequency that's more or less taken the media by storm. And I think there is a slight confusion there in terms of what these things actually mean. So going back, I still urge people to look at Berkshire Hathaway stock because this is Buffett. He's in his 80s. He's still, if you look on YouTube, skipping all the way to work every day because he's got a phenomenal life doing what he loves doing. And it's a human. It's not a computer. And he's amassed tremendous amounts of wealth. Certainly, a lot of that wealth wasn't just stock trading. He also bought companies, bought Geico, had tremendous, he was, as Charlie Munger says, drowned in income and cash flow to be able to build that wealth. But it's still human-based. So the answer to that, not necessarily. But the question is, why do people make so much of this computer stuff? And I think it's also to do with the fact that we've been inundated by this notion of artificial intelligence. Stephen Hawking coming out saying that this is like, you know, the bane of humanity and then other people saying these machines are going to start to learn and do phenomenal things. Somehow the machine can do better than us. And what people tend to forget is that these algorithms were written by humans. So if you look at the high frequency domain, what's actually happening there is that people don't make money necessarily out of predicting efficiently where the markets will go as they're squeezing inefficiencies out of the transaction mechanism in the market. So for instance, um, high frequency trading or latency arbitrage particularly looks at the fact that there are certain requirements to disseminate price equally to everybody so that you show the same bid offer in the stock market. But transmitting that price takes time. So if you are quicker in terms of your uh, ob obtaining the result or that particular price and being able to submit, you have a time advantage. And that's little to do necessarily with predicting as much as with the plumbing behind it. And you find that a lot of the stuff that the high frequency domain does is really around the plumbing, or used to be until it got flooded and then it became much more difficult. Um, so, and that happens sort of on the millisecond, subsecond domain. If you go to the minutely domain, it is actually possible that computers can detect patterns that are more difficult for humans to detect. But going back to what I said, these are mathematical algorithms developed by humans. So if you teach yourself some basic maths, like linear regression, you can go ahead and you can find these patterns yourself. And interestingly enough, on paper, you should be making a lot of money. And a lot of people who day trade probably extract value or try to extract value using these very basic patterns of mean reversion and momentum. But what these people don't understand is that the money is not necessarily made in predicting the market sufficiently as executing correctly. So let, let's put it this way. If euro dollar trades at 107.50 and the bid ask is one pip, which it typically is or slightly bigger depending on the broker, for every round trip, you, have, you lose a pip because that's how a market maker makes his money. Um, he sells you something at a low price and buys it. Or no, he actually buys it from you at a low price and sells it to you at a high price and that spread he makes as income. So that means that you actually have to pay the market for the privilege of trading. And you do 100 trades in a day, you've just spent 100 pips, which is a very big hurdle for you to overcome. So what you tend to find is that the high frequency funds don't just have very good predictive models, they actually aggregate prices from lots of brokers, create their own internal markets, and then try to execute their orders in such a way that they come as close to mid as possible. And that kind of infrastructure costs millions of dollars, but it also requires the willingness of the other participants to hook into you because they want to see the flow or they want to be able to hedge or for whatever reason. So there's always some sort of give and take. And when you talk to these hedge funds that work on this kind of very low frequency domain, or high frequency domain, low time frame domain, um, they will say that probably 60 to 70% of their PL comes from efficient execution, which is remarkable. It's not about how predictive my, my, my system is, it's about how good I execute in the market. Um, so, therefore, coming back to the question, man versus machine, or horses for courses. 
I mean, will a machine be able to make a prediction better than a human as to where Coca-Cola will be in a year? I, I really doubt that because the financial markets are so noisy. They're so influenced by external political events. I mean, Trump election. So uh, on the day of the election, it was phenomenal. First of all, it was risk off. The markets thought, oh my God, what a catastrophe. Then they recovered and then they just went skyrocketing. Then comes the inauguration. And then the guy turns out to be a self-contradictory kind of guy. He doesn't know what he wants and where he wants it. And he tweets all the time. The markets are thinking, oh my God, this is, this is a nightmare. And then they start not going anywhere. The dollar sells off. Would a computer have been able to predict all this in the long term, six months from now? Clearly not. It just doesn't have that insight. Maybe, yes, maybe you can imagine that a machine could have like, gotten all these different documents and news stories about Trump over the last 20 years and made some sort of personality profile and then infused that into its market analysis and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's certainly possible. But again, a human would have had to implement that. And then that's very difficult. Maybe we're almost there. I mean, we've got these very interesting developments by Google, like DeepMind, and who knows where that will lead to. But I think when people talk about machines and they think particularly about high frequency, you're gaming the exchange mechanism. You're just a much better plumber than everybody else. When it comes to long-term forecasting of markets, machines and humans face the same challenges and I think humans are probably better equipped at detecting and assimilating patterns and making a judgment call.